This video is designed to show you how to do a confirmatory factor analysis using Lizeral 8.72. Uh, before I open Lizeral, though, I want to uh, describe the context of the data that we'll be analyzing. This data consists of 12 questions that were taken from the library quality survey uh, that was developed by uh, Bruce Thompson and his colleagues. Uh, the scale for each of these 12 items that we'll be analyzing uh, runs from 1 low quality to 9 uh, high quality. And so each of the participants were asked to rate their perceptions of library quality based on these uh, questions. So what I'm going to do is go down here and open up Lyseral 8.72. And what I have to do first is import the data. And uh, so I need to scroll to the file that I have my data in. And in this case, I have the data saved as an SPSS data file. But you can see there are many, many other types of uh, data files that you could save your data in. And so um, you can see the data file here. And then I'm going to open it. And I'm going to save it and call it library. What I'm doing now is creating what we call the PSF file or the pre lizeral file. And you can see now that each one of the items is defined in each of the um, prelist columns. So I want to go to my uh, data and I want to define my variables and I'm going to select them all. And in this case we're going to treat them uh, as continuous data. And then I'm going to go OK and then I'm going to save, make sure I save that change. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to calculate um, the statistics for this data. And so I want the covariances and uh, I want to make sure that those are there. Uh, now if I were doing, uh, if I wanted to, I could save these to uh, some sort of external file. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. And then I'm going to click on OK. And you can see that from this output, I get um, information such as the mean and the standard deviations for each of the items. If I continue to scroll, I get tests of uh, normality. I get the frequency distributions. You can see this data is somewhat skewed. And then as I scroll down, as I scroll down further, oops, I get the covariance matrix. And then I get uh, the means and the standard deviations for each item. So I'm going to close that. That file will be saved in the folder that I created. Now I'm going to go back here to New. And I'm going to select Path Diagram. And I'm going to click on OK. And then I'm going to call the path diagram. I'm going to name it library. Now, in order for me to get my variable so I can draw my um, path diagram, I have to go to setup and variables. And then I got to click on add and read. And I'm going to uh, select the prelist system file. And then I'm going to go OK. Whoops. I'm sorry. I need to select the prelist. I need to select the Lisseral system file. And then I'll go OK. And you can see now my uh, variables are uh, populated in my observed variable box. Now I need to create my latent variables. So my first latent variable I'm just going to call f1 for factor 1. 
uh, a priori it was determined that there were three factors. So now we're going to test to see if these three factors um, fit with the hypoth hypothesized model. So now I have my uh, three factors completed or uh, specified and then I can go OK. Now what I'm going to do is bring those over like this and um, then I'll bring my items over. And you can see that what Lisserl does is it automatically puts in the covariance uh, the the error covariances for the three factors. So the first four items um, are hypothesized to load on the first factor and then we'll draw our arrows. Okay now if I click on this square it allows me to move the variables but I can't draw arrows, so I have to go back and make sure I click on the arrows. So then I can bring in the next four items. Oops, there again. And then I'll bring in the last four. So now I have my path analysis drawn. And one thing I was going to show you is if you um, click on these indicator variables, I can select those. And with this one that's the smallest, I can go to image size and say I want both the width and the height to be the smallest. And then what that will allow me to do is fit more variables on a page. So let's say I had 25 variables. It might be kind of tough to get them all on this uh, this uh, drawing board. So uh, this allows me to uh, manipulate those a little bit so they fit. Then the next step is to go to build simplest syntax. I could build literal syntax if I want. And so what this does is it says it's going to take the system file from the library DSF file the latent variables are three factors, and these are relationships. So these show the items that uh, are associated with each factor. And then I'm going to run my analysis. And you can see that um, at uh, 83 degrees of freedom, or I'm sorry, um, the chi-square of 83 at 51 degrees of freedom, the RMSEA is 0.056. Now, if I come up here to Window and go to Output, I can see the output for my uh, path analysis. Here's the covariance matrix again. And um, these are the measurement equations that show you uh, the path uh, coefficients or the regression coefficients. Uh, this would be the um, uh, standard error in the significant value. And we continue to scroll down. This is the matrix of independence variables or the psi matrix. And then these are your fit indices here. And you also see that we have the modification indexes are there for you to look at. So I think this gives you a pretty good overview of uh, how to conduct a confirmatory factor analysis with interval data using Lisserl 8.72.